Now this, and it is from the American Psychological Association. 90% of us say our level of stress over money has remained the same or gotten worse in the last year. 90%. All right. Tie that in with the middle class squeeze. This is not a thriving economy the way President Obama describes it. Look at these numbers from Pew Research. Middle income households made up 51% of the population in 2013. It was 60% in 1970. In the same time frame, the share of the country that qualifies as lower income, well, that's grown. 29% now, up from 25% in 1970. Let's bring in Steve Siebold. He's the author of How Rich People Think. All right, Steve, I want to go back to that 90% say that they are stressed about the same level now or worse about money. 90%. Haven't ev doesn't everybody always stress about money, don't they? Well, I think most people do, yeah. I think it's probably getting worse over time because the, obviously the, the entire global economy is changing, and I don't think we're changing with it. I mean, we need to start teaching kids in school you know, how to, how to create value in a, in a free market economy instead of just how to write a resume. Wait, wait, are you saying that we've got to get used to this, that middle America is shrinking, uh, poor America is growing, and the rich, while well, they're out front of everybody else, do, or do we just have to get used to this? Oh, absolutely. This is the new norm. With globalization, with technology, with the high cost of higher education going through the roof, I mean, this is the new norm, and we're going to have to shift the way we teach people how to function in a free market economy. But wait a second. Uh, you, you don't put any blame on President Obama for this, and I'm not putting blame on him. I'm saying maybe Obamanomics is a factor in this, but you think that technology, globalization, the cost of higher education, that's more important than President Obama's no-growth policies? Well, I think, I don't blame him. I think he's delusional, <laughs> but, but honestly, but uh, no disrespect to the President of the United States, but I think he is delusional about this, but I don't think that's really the, the, the issue. I mean, the middle class is going to continue to shrink because of globalization, I think mostly technology, again, higher cost of education, and we've got to, I think we've got to prepare for this being the new norm going forward. I wanted to take a look for a second at the top 1%. <clears throat> we always hear that they're the bad guys, these are the people we've got to tax some more, take it off them and give it to everybody else, and that's the way we get prosperity. I don't think the real problem is with the 1%. I think the people who are really racing away with the big bucks, that is the 0.01%. The guys who are making a ton of money, literally billions, from new technology startups. I think that's the group that's racing away from everybody else. After all, look, you're in the top 1% if you make, what, $400,000 a year. That's not exactly rich by standard, if you're in New York City or much of California. Oh, you're completely right. Exactly. I mean, you're paying half of it in taxes almost. I mean, and, and so yeah, you're absolutely right. But, but I don't think it's the, the rich cannot save the middle class. It just won't work. It, it, it's not feasible economically. It won't work math, math, mathematically. So what we've got to do is we've got to expand the middle class by teaching the middle class how to create value for value, value for money. Instead of just teaching them how to go out and get a job or write a resume, how to actually create value in the marketplace so they can make more money and be pro more prosperous. But you're talking about going back to old, what used to be called, middle class virtues. You go through school, you save your money, you marry, you have children, you buy a house, probably in that order, never spend all of your income, always save some of your income. You're just talking about a return to middle class values, aren't you? Well, I think to some degree you're right, absolutely, yeah. But with, with the one exception of teaching them how to create value, to, to start a business, this, maybe it's a part-time business, maybe, maybe it's within the, in the context of their job where they go to their boss and say, boss, how can I create more value for you so I can be compensated at a higher level? I mean, it's not rocket science, but I think these are the moves we're going to have to start to make instead of, what, like you're saying, Stuart, uh, blaming the wealthy. Okay. It's ridiculous. Steve Seaball, you wrote the book. We appreciate you being with us. Thanks very much, Steve. See you again soon.